So uh, today we will take up a problem on the variable wall temperature case and we will look at how to get the expression for uh, the wall heat flux variation as well as the heat transfer coefficient. Uh, so let us take the example of a, a linear surface temperature variation that is of the form P wall of X is equal to A plus BX okay. So if you plot the surface temperature as a function of X so at X is equal to 0 that will be equal to constant A and from there it varies linearly okay. So this is the value T wall at X is equal to 0 which is equal to A. So if you go back to what we derived yesterday uh, with the Duhamel uh, superposition integral if you have a continuous variation of uh, the wall temperature so we have uh, derived the expression for the wall heat flux this was 0 0.331 into K by X PR 1 by 3 and you have T wall at uh, zeta equal to 0 minus T infinity plus 0 to X 1 minus zeta by X the whole power 3 by 4 minus 1 by 3 DT wall by D zeta into D zeta okay. So this is our expression you know. <coughs> Now if uh, for the limiting case where you do not have uh, any slope the slope is 0 so this is T wall minus T infinity so this becomes equal to your flat plate uh, with a uniform temperature expression okay. So of course if you have a continuous variation but also intermediate temperature jumps okay so there you have to introduce an additional uh, delta T into H you know for those temperature jumps in between okay. So apart from that uh, this is the expression now we will substitute uh, for the given temperature profile whatever we require so for, for example in order to evaluate this uh, Duhamel's integral we need to first get the slope of the wall temperature profile and since this is a linear uh, profile it is very simple so in this case dt wall by d zeta will be for this particular profile B right. So we will substitute this uh, into equation let us call this as equation 1 So this is uh, T wall at zeta equal to 0 is nothing but A okay so right at X is equal to 0 this is nothing but A so I am just uh, substituting for T wall at zeta equal to 0 as A minus T infinity plus integral 0 to X 1 minus zeta by X to the power 3 by 4 the whole power minus 1 by 3. Uh, dt wall by d zeta is nothing but b so this will be b into d zeta okay so now all we need to do is evaluate this integral because everything else is known t infinity is given for this problem whatever value it is known a is a constant b is a constant so we need to find this particular integral and this particular integral uh, whatever slope that you get and put it here is of uh, the following form which we will reduce it to so we can assume a variable z which is equal to zeta by x to the power 3 by 4 okay so I am just going to transform the variables again so I am saying that zeta by x to the power 3 by 4 is equal to some other variable z so therefore dz by d zeta should be equal to 3 by 4 zeta by x 
to the power 3 by 4 minus 1 which is minus 1 by 4 into with respect to d zeta if I so x is a constant so it will be 1 by x right so this is my derivative okay so therefore now I can substitute for d zeta in this integral in terms of d z okay so this will give me my d z is equal to 3 by 4 into x power this is x power 1 by 4 minus 1 so this will be x power minus 3 by 4 okay into zeta to the power minus 1 by 4 into d zeta all right it is just uh, I am just doing some algebraic manipulation there so therefore now I can substitute for d zeta I can transform these variables from d zeta to d z okay so I can substitute for zeta by x to the power 3 by 4 as z and d zeta I can substitute in terms of d z in fact uh, I can also uh, write this in terms of z okay now z is zeta by x to the power 3 by 4 so z to the power of 1 by 3 I can put it because this is already yeah so my d z will be d zeta 4 by 3 here x to the power 3 by 4 zeta to the power 1 by 4 okay so uh, zeta by x so I can write this uh, as 1 by 4 um, x power minus 3 by 4 I can take 1 by 4 x yeah so I can write this as uh, zeta by x the whole power 1 by 4 this is 1 minus yeah right yeah right I can write it like that because this is anyway 3 power 3 by 4 I can write it as x divided by x power 1 by 4 okay so now this is nothing but zeta by x to the power 1 by 4 is nothing but z to the power 1 by 3 okay so this I can rewrite as z to the power this entire thing as z to the power 1 third okay so what I am doing is I am transforming all my variables from zeta plane to z plane okay so wherever I have z that also I have to include that so therefore if I substitute into this expression 0 0.331 a by x pr to the power 1 by 3 r e x to the power so you have a minus t infinity plus uh, so I have been substituting for d zeta so 4 by 3 is constant 4 by 3 also b is a constant I can take out and also inside the integral this is integrated with respect to now d z therefore x also can be taken out of the integral now 0 to this is originally 0 to uh, x here so I can transform this to 0 to 1 okay because at uh, uh, so zeta equal to x this becomes z equal to 1 so therefore this will be the upper uh, integral will be 1 upper limit of integration so this will be 1 minus zeta 1 minus z sorry 1 minus z minus 1 by 3 and you have this uh, z power 1 by 3 here so that will also come outside 1 by 3 into dz okay just uh, check 1 minus z to the power minus 1 by 3 into z to the power 1 by 3 dz okay so now uh, I have anyway transformed that to this integral right here now how, sh how should I integrate so I will just give you the 
uh, formula now this is of the form of what is called as a beta function okay the beta function can be expressed so generally the problems with the Duhamel integral will be of the form of a beta function once you transform the variables from uh, zeta to dz okay so you will be ending up with a function something like this and uh, you can express this beta function in terms of uh, constants p and q 0 to 1 z to the power p minus 1 1 minus z q minus 1 dz okay this is valid for positive values of p and q less than infinity okay so this is how your beta function is defined okay now if you compare this with this expression you can see 1 minus z to the power q so therefore q minus 1 is equal to minus 1 by 3 and p minus 1 is equal to 1 by 3 right therefore q is equal to 1 1 minus 1 by 3 2 by 3 and p equal to 1 plus 1 by 3 4 by 3 okay so therefore this p and q will be nothing but uh, 4 by 3 comma 2 by 3 okay so therefore this entire term can be written in terms of beta function uh, okay I can write it again okay so everything here as it is a minus t infinity plus 4 by 3 bx into beta function okay this entire integral is beta function the parameters are 4 by 3 comma 2 by 3 okay so the integral is replaced by the beta and why do we now need to write this in terms of beta function because uh, we can the beta functions are tabulated okay in fact uh, very specifically the beta function itself can be expressed as a function of another function called the gamma function okay so and gamma function tables uh, are quite common you know they are tabulated for different values of uh, uh, the function so therefore uh, we will express the beta function in terms of gamma function as follows this is your gamma function this is your beta function where generally your gamma function uh, gamma of say some variable s is represented as e power minus x x to the power s minus 1 dx so this is your gamma function basically okay and this has been tabulated you know you can do this integral numerically also for different values of s but this have been tabulated gamma function charts are there so you can look up for the values that we have here so therefore beta of uh, 4 by 3 comma 2 by 3 will be gamma of 4 by 3 into gamma of 2 by 3 by gamma of what 6 by 3 that is 2 okay so if you plug in from the gamma function tables which are available online you can google gamma function charts and you will find those nice charts for different values of this you know for p and q so if you plug in you will get this beta of 4 by 3 comma 2 by 3 as 1.2087 okay 
so this is the resulting resulting expression for beta 4 by 3 comma 2 by 3 so if you substitute that value into this so this is 1.2087 into 4 by 3 which comes out as 1.612 okay so now we have a complete expression which gives you the variation of heat flux with respect to x okay provided you know your constant a and b and you know the free stream temperature t infinity all right so now therefore from this the heat transfer coefficient can be defined okay so h of x can be defined as q wall double prime x by T wall of x minus T infinity. Okay, now T wall of x minus T infinity can be written as a plus b x minus T infinity. So therefore, you have this entire 0 0.331 a by x v r to the power one third Six one two B X. The entire thing divided by T wall minus T infinity, which is nothing but A plus B X minus T infinity. Okay, so therefore, for uh, the given constants, you you can now determine the local variation in the heat transfer coefficient. And for the limiting case, where your b equal to 0 b equal to 0 gives me a uniform wall temperature okay so for that case how does it reduce this becomes a minus t infinity here the denominator this cancels with a minus uh, t infinity here b is anyway 0 okay so then you will what will be the expression So constant wall temperature that is 0 0.331 K by X PR power 1 by 3 Re X power half okay so this is your constant wall temperature boundary condition so for the limiting case where B equal to 0 you retrieve your constant wall temperature uh, heat transfer coefficient okay so it is a very straightforward method as such you know so uh, so what it finally means that so you can also solve this by dividing this into piecewise constants like we did yesterday you know you can assume that you can represent this by piecewise constants like this right you can divide this into piecewise constants and instead of the integration that we did here we will re replace this by discrete summation okay so if you do that you can also get somewhat similar expression but that will be in a slightly discrete form So in that case you will have something like point three three one into K by X R E X power half P R power one third.
So this will be T wall zero minus T infinity. Uh, so when you differentiate it, uh, the original profile you have a phi. So that will be minus k d phi by d y at y equal to zero. This will be nothing but the heat transfer coefficient h. Okay. So that h you have already substituted as 0 0.331 k by x r e x power half p r power one by third into one minus zeta by x the whole power minus three by two. Three by four. What is that? Can you go back and revise the expression for h of x? 0 0.331 k by x r e x power half p r power one third 1 minus zeta by x to the power what? 3 by 4 the whole power minus minus 1 by 3. Okay, so this we had to substitute into the expression for q wall of x which was uh, so you had the original expression for t wall minus t infinity that is your t minus t infinity was t wall 0 minus t infinity into phi of 0 comma x comma y plus summation of n equal to 1 to capital N delta T wall n phi of x comma y. So this was what we saw yesterday. This was for the local variation in temperature. We have superposed the solutions where you have a uniform temperature okay, and 1 by 1. So then the incremental temperatures. So all of that when we superpose. So first you have this is the basic solution that you have plus the incremental solutions which is basically this okay. So now when we want to calculate the heat flux so we had to say minus k into d phi by dy at y equal to 0 which was nothing but the heat transfer coefficient h. So this we had to substitute into this expression so therefore this is taken out as common you have T wall not minus T infinity as one of the terms and the second term will be the rest of the terms will be n, n equal to 1 to capital N number of discrete intervals you have delta T wall N okay into uh, 1 minus zeta by X the whole power 3 by 4 whole power minus 1 by 3 okay so this is what you will have if you have a discrete variation if you had a continuous variation you will replace this by an integral okay integral over d zeta okay now you have a discrete variation therefore you just uh, substitute for delta t as it is and of course the heat transfer coefficient for the first location where zeta equal to 0 there is no unheated starting line so therefore you do not have this term for that for the subsequent uh, boundaries con conditions you maintain at zeta equal to zeta 1 zeta equal to zeta 2 so there you have unheated starting line so there you have to substitute the values of so this will be corresponding value of zeta zeta n okay so by doing this also you can calculate your local wall flux variation instead of using the Duhamel's uh, integral method you can just linearly superpose this is the superposition method right. So you can divide this continuous curve into small discrete intervals where you have uh, you know, variation of temperature like this you can substitute that into this discreetly and you can also estimate the wall heat flux okay. So both will be more or less the same the continuous is the more accurate because you are taking into account the slope accurate okay. So this is to just give an example okay how you take take a problem where suppose you have a wall temperature variation like this and you can use either the Duhamel's integral or a simple superposition technique and you can calculate your local heat transfer coefficient and your 
uh, wall heat flux okay so any any questions on this okay now uh, for more complex profiles you know you, it's more likely that most of the wall temperature variation cannot be approximated just by a straight line it will be more complicated profile so for a more complicated wall temperature variation what is common practice is that uh, we can approximate the wall temperature variation as something like power law series so instead of using an a plus bx relationship we can write this as a plus summation n equal to 1 to capital n b n x power n okay so this is a power series expansion so which is which is which can be used to approximate more complicated nature of profiles you know if you have a profile something like this so you can you can use power series expansion you can fit the coefficients to a no you can do a regression and fit the coefficients such that you can approximate this curve with the power series expansion okay so this is a better way to represent this than using a straight line right so you can substitute this now into this expression here so you had a term here dt wall by d zeta so now you have to calculate dt wall by d zeta for this so what will be the expression for dt wall by d zeta hmm? summation n equal to 1 to n you have uh, n b n x power n minus 1 or zeta power n minus 1 okay so this has to be now substituted into uh, the expression where we had d, dt by dt wall by d zeta okay and if you do that the resulting expression for the heat flux comes out to be everything is the same only you have the summation term 331 k by x so everything up to here is the same except you have the summation term and everything inside the summation term goes there so n equal to 1 to n you have n b n so now uh, so this will be x power n minus 1 into there will be an x which will come out of the transformation okay so that will be giving you x power n okay into the other the beta function will be there as it is so you will have beta now this beta function also will become a function of n okay so where this beta function it can be written as gamma function of 4 by 3 originally it was 4 by 3 now it becomes 4 by 3 n uh, into gamma function of 2 by 3 divided by gamma function of 4 by 3 n plus 2 by 3 okay so now depending on the value of n that you use okay so the value of beta will change and then you have to sum them over all the values of n so suppose you are using five terms you have to sum them for each value of n and for all the five terms you have to sum them together so so and that that will give you the variation if you have a more complicated profile you know you can approximate that with the power series expansion and you can use this expression to calculate the local heat flux variation okay now the question is uh, given uh, local variation in the temperature profile we can use this to calculate the local heat flux but what about the other way suppose your wall boundary condition is a locally varying wall heat flux okay so how do you calculate the local wall temperature as well as the heat transfer coefficient okay so that is also a little bit more complicated derivation i'm not going to do that i will just only give you the final solution for the for the wall temperature variation
okay for a non uniform ball flux so for this case you can calculate the wall temperature variation you can express it as follows 0.623 by k pr power minus 1 by 3 rex power minus half you have uh, 0 to x 1 minus zeta by x to the power 3 by 4 the whole raised to the power minus 2 third into q okay so this is the local variation in the wall flux whatever you have so that can be substituted into this and you can get the corresponding wall temperature variation okay so this is uh, this given in your textbook case in Crawford okay he has also not derived it but I think there is a reference to some literature where they have done it and they have shown that shown this kind of an expression anyway so this is beyond the scope of your this thing but you should understand that you can do either of these in, when using the approximate solutions given a non-uniform wall temperature how do you calculate the variation in the wall heat flux or given a non uniform wall heat flux how can you calculate the variation in the wall temperature so both are possible by using the approximate methods so I think uh, with that we will uh, kind of wrap up the external laminar external flows external boundary layer flows uh, so, um, so we have covered quite a bit you know we have cut almost covered whatever possible similarity solutions under lamp external boundary layers and also the approximate methods we you know whatever external uh, laminar similarity solutions they have a complementary uh, integral methods also integral solutions also like we have seen if you have uh, the Faulkner scan solutions for wedge problem you have similar uh, von Karman Polhausen solution when you use the integral methods okay of course like the Blasher solution there you have you can approximate some velocity profile and very easily find out the expression for say Nusselt local Nusselt number okay so whatever is possible in fact uh, you can also uh, use the approximate solution for for example a flow with transpiration you have boundary where you have porous boundary with suction or blowing so we have derived the similarity solution for that in fact we have we have identified the condition for the uh, variation of the suction profile velocity profile so that you can get a similarity solution okay so the same way we can derive an approximate by using approximate method you can we can derive expressions for the local skin friction coefficient as well as the Nusselt number variation with transpiration so every similarity solution has a counterpart in the approximate methods and more than that you can also derive some spe special cases such as the unheated starting length which you cannot derive by similarity solutions and also cases such as these where you have non-uniform wall temperature variation of any of any given profile which you can approximate as a power series expansion or a non-uniform wall heat flux okay so for these kind of uh, boundary conditions you know it will the similarity solutions are not possible or becomes very rigorous so their approximate solutions are much easier okay so so this is in a nutshell giving you an idea what we covered so from the next week onwards we will uh, look at internal laminar internal boundary layer flows okay so there actually strictly speaking the boundary layer concept does not have a meaning that, that the way that laminar external flows has okay the strict definition of uh, boundary layer flow does not hold for internal flows okay because once you have a fully developed flow both the boundary layers merge and everywhere you have viscous effects there is no place where you can use potential flow and approximate uh, that with the potential theory and somewhere you can solve with the uh, 
uh, solving the full Navier-Stokes. Okay, so therefore we have to resort to a complete solution of the Navier-Stokes equations in some cases. In some cases we can make approximation to uh, the velocity gradients or the temperature gradients. Okay, so there we can obtain exact solutions of a reduced form of the Navier-Stokes equations. Okay, so that is also very important and interesting because most of uh, your practical problems in heat transfer. Okay, although there are many external flow problems, you will find most of the heat exchangers they are encounter. You will be encountering internal flows there, and in those cases, uh, you should understand the approximations that you can make and uh, how you can get the expressions for local variation in the Nusselt number and, and in say fully developed case how the Nusselt number variation there is no variation in the Nusselt number and so on okay so that we will cover in the next 9 to 10 classes starting from next week so in about 3 weeks uh, I think we should be able to cover the laminar internal flows and uh, then from the following week onwards that is about the 4th week of March Professor Kolar will uh, start uh, turbulent flows. Uh, so that will be for about uh, 7 lectures or so and uh, or 7 or 8 lectures and maybe natural convection for another 7 or 8 lectures.